Hey guys, this is Basin from BS Audio Tools, and today we're going to look at BSFF Texture together. BSFF Texture is a spectral effect that lets you combine a source signal and a sidechain signal in a spectral way. Spectral means that we split this audio into a lot of different bands, and then we process those frequency bands individually. Uh, when you look at BSF texture, you can immediately see this big XY patch, and this is also the heart of the device, because this lets us crossfade between the two different audio sources. On the bottom here, we can crossfade the volumes of each band. And here on the y-axis, we will be able to crossfade the tonality of each band. So down here in the bottom left corner, we will have the input signal. And up here in the top right corner, we have both the tonality and the volumes of the bands of the sidechain signal. Speaking of the sidechain signal, we can select the sidechain signal here. Then down here, we can set the amount of bands and the overlap. The overlap is basically the time resolution of the effect. So uh, I would recommend an overlap of four. For drums, we sometimes can use higher overlaps. That sounds a little cleaner, but we will also need more processing power. Then we can enable an envelope follower here. We can have it follow the input signal or the sidechain signal. We can boost the signal. We can also add attack and release. Then we have a little filter section here, which lets us high pass the wet combined signal. And it also lets us low pass the dry signal at the same frequency, which we can set here. Then we have a spectral gate, which lets us reduce noise in the wet signal. We can also boost or decrease the volume of the wet signal. And here we can mix between the wet and dry signal. Now that we've went over all the UI elements, I would suggest that we have a look at what this effect can actually do. So now we're inside Ableton. As you can see, I've increased the scaling a bit so you can see better what I'm doing here with the FF Texture. And I've already prepared a few examples of how we can use BS FF Texture to get some cool sounds. First off, we'll start with this little drum break here. And we're going to just add some, some texturing to it. So let's disable everything here real quick. So this is how the drum bag sounds on its own. Now let's quickly hear the texture as well. So now we want to add this texture to our sound. How are we going to do that? We're going to turn on BSF of texture. We already selected the texture with the post effects as the sidechain input, and we have disabled the texture here, so we only hear it through the FF texture. The mix is as a 100%, so if we play it now, we should only hear the texture. And we do. Now, we will try to blend that with the high end of the drum break to get a cool result. That already sounds quite cool. Now we're going to turn on the filter and filter out a bit of the low end. And since we wanted to follow the contours of the drum break, we're also going to turn on the envelope follower. We want to follow it to the input. And now let's hear that again. Yeah, that sounds really nice. And now we can start to blend that back in. That already sounds really, really cool. Let's hear that again with and without. That sounds absolutely great. As a second example, we also have like a little bass loop here. Now we want to add the same texture to that as well. Now let's just try that out real quick. That also adds some really cool texture. Here it's a little quieter, so we will try to boost the texture a little bit to make it come out even more. And that sounds absolutely great. Perfect. Now, on to our next use case. This is actually where 
the idea for BSF texture originated. Some of you might know about Newfangled Saturate, which is a really cool saturation plugin that keeps the spectral information while distorting, which allows you to push it a lot more. And basically what we did here is something very similar. So we have this loop here. This already sounds really, really cool and I love the high-end texture, but it's not aggressive enough yet. So we hit it with a little rack with some filtering, some EQ, and a whole shitload of distortion. And this will leave us with this sound. Which, to be fair, sounds a lot more aggressive, but we lost all that cool little high-end texture and detail. So what we can do is we can turn on the BSFF texture. I've also added a little limiter here that just boosts the volume a slight bit because this tends to lower the volume a tiny amount. And we, this time we actually select the same channel, but in the beginning as our input signal. So how we do that is we select our, our channel, which is called Retexturize. And here you can see we can select it as pre-effects. And now when we play only the B with a mix at 100%, we actually have the original sound here. But if we go to A, we have the distorted and processed signal. Now what we can do is we can mix those two. which gives some really nice, nice tones. And we can also just do that for the high end. So we'll enable the filter, both the high pass and the low pass. So now we don't have any low end anymore because we have the mix at 100%. But if we lower that again, we can basically only replace the high end of that sound with the original high end. And you can even still move this around and get some very cool fitting textures out of this. Great. Now onto our next use case, which is cross synthesizing two different sounds. And what we did here is first of all, uh, we took this little snare here which sounds like this on its own. And we want to now mix it with our cross synthesis source, which we already selected here. We've muted the channel again. And now if you go to the top right corner, we will only hear the second signal, which sounds like this. Now what, can, what we can do is just move around our XY pad in here and see what, what sticks. And I really like that. That's a super cool way to combine two drum samples. And of course, we're not only limited to drums. We can also do the same with basses. So we have those two basses. And together, they might sound something like this. As you can hear, you can combine two sounds in a very interesting way, and I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of fun with this. Now I want to show you a little abbreviation of that exact technique, which is more catered towards some color base, which I know a few of you also really enjoy. And what we're doing here is we have this original bass sound, and then we have this little rave stab here, for the tonal part. And now if you combine the tonality of our sound B, so our sidechain input, which is this rave step in this case, and the volume or the bin volumes of our original sound, which is the bass sound, we get something like this.
then we just use the gate to clean it up a little more. But I think that sounds like a very convincing color base and we can obviously not only take a sample, but we can also take something like a super saw with a little cord here. And when we select that as our sidechain input, then it will sound something like this. And I think that sounds really, really cool. Now, up next, we have spectral filtering. I think you are all familiar with the Kilohertz filter plugin, the filter table one. And we can actually do something very, very similar with our FF texture. Uh, basically, what we do to get there is we once again have a bass sound, which sounds like this. Really cool, I know. Um, and as a sidechain signal, we put in something like this, which is super weird, and I really like it a lot. And now we're trying to filter this with our sidechain signal. So what we have to do for, to get there is we lower the tonality to be only on the A part, and we equally combine our volumes from, from A and B. So how we can set that really easily is to just double-click here in the middle, then we'll center it. Now we get something like this. And since I just talked about the wavetable part of things, or the wavetable filtering, we can also do that, of course. So instead of using an audio signal, we can use a synthesizer, in this case, we once again use Serum with this monster three wave table, which I think you all know. And now when we play it, and of course, we can also still pitch it around, which is basically the same as changing the filter cutoff and are not only limited to just the wavetail, can also, for example, add some phase modulation to it. And this way we can get some really, really cool filtering going on. Now, last but not least, we can also use this to create some very cool feedback loops. And this works because we can not only choose another channel as a sidechain input, but also the channel itself. So in this case, we have this little pad here. And now we choose this as a sidechain input and we set it to post effects. So after that, it will route back into this device as the B part. As you can see, we increase the gain quite a bit. Um, this is to make sure the feedback is actually happening. A uh, little word of caution, always use a limiter in such feedback routings to avoid everything blowing up. Now we can play it again. You can hear the feedback kicking in when we go near BB. Um, and now we can actually put some really cool stuff in this feedback loop. So first off, I want to put an EQ since we will do some shifting. And when we downward shift inside the feedback loop, we will produce a lot of very, very low frequency harmonics. And to prevent those building up, we're just adding uh, an EQ here. But now you can hear that we get some really cool tones just from this shifter here. Just add a little bit of reverb as well. So I would like to thank you all for staying with me. I hope this video was interesting. I hope you learned something new. And when you decide to grab FF Texture, I hope these tips will help you and you will have a lot of fun with it. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.